The registration deadline was February 19th in North Carolina, but if we go back even before then, we're noticing an interesting trend. Compared to 2012, voter turnouts for Democrats at primaries has been way down, as low as a 30% decrease at South Carolina, for example. Now, when we compare that to Republicans, we're seeing record turnouts. At the Nevada primary, there was a 127% increase. Snow isn't always the biggest problem. Here, underneath the snow, is a thin layer of ice. And that ice can make walking or driving a lot more difficult. All right, so being from UNC, a little bit bitter about the loss against Wisconsin. So it looks like uh, I'm going to change my allegiance real quick to uh, Arizona, you know, see, see what they can do against the Badgers. So you could wait outside of stores like Best Buy for hours in the cold on Thanksgiving and Black Friday, or You can shop online from the comfort of your own home. It's a pretty simple game. You catch, befriend, and train powerful creatures known as Pokemon. And then you battle friends and rivals to find out who's the ultimate Pokemon master. Good evening and welcome to Carolina Week. I'm Avery Hall. And I'm Luis Fernandez. We've got severe weather in the area to tell you about, so for that we're going to go live to meteorologist Matt Jones. Matt, what's going on? Happy almost Thanksgiving. Welcome to Sports Extra, the UNC School of Media and Journalism's only sports talk, highlights, and analysis show. Another senior wrapping up four years of fine work at the Dean Dome, Luis Fernandez, who joins us now. Luis, what's the vibe like down there? Thanks, Brett. Yeah, you can see down here, everyone is really lining up. They're ready for the game, but there's also a little bit of anxiety. After that game against UVA on Saturday, the race for the ACC crown has gotten a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings right now. If you haven't voted, you have only six days to do so. Sharon Nunn is live at the polling place that's closest to campus. Sharon? It's been more than three years since someone beat Faith Hedgepith to death on her off-campus apartment. And now there might be new clues as to who killed her. This week marks a tragic anniversary. Six years ago, on March 5th, two men robbed and murdered UNC student body president, Eve Carson. Carson was also a Moorhead Kane scholar. Carolina is still ranked 22nd in the AP poll, so there is a lot of talent on this team. It's just, Jordan, it could take a little bit of time to get back into the swing of things. This year, four of our men's soccer players have made the jump to the professional stage. Reporter Lucero Cifuentes has the story. Did you get a chance to rush, Lewis? Oh yeah, Rivers, you know I got a chance to rush. I was running all over the place. I was jumping over fires. It was all good family fun. You know, the Duke rivalry this year has been amazing. There have been some really exciting moments, as exciting as an ultra light beam. So we're going to go ahead and take a look back with the help of play-by-play -play announcer Jones Angel and the incomparable Kanye West. So here at Sports Extra, something we do is study sports on the field, but what if I told you that you could get academic credit for studying sports in the classroom? All right, Jared Corder has more. Duke was struggling, but now has a win in four straight games, and thanks in part to uh, that guy right there, Grayson, hold on. That's not, that's not Grayson Allen. Guys, I know, I know he looks like Ted Cruz, but that's mean. Can we, can we fix this ball? Can we, can we do that? Oh, there you go, thanks man, I appreciate it. Hey, you registered to vote in Chapel Hill? Thank you very much. Hey, you registered to vote in Chapel Hill? Yeah. Thanks so much. Great, thank you very much. Life can be hard for Jacob Weinberg. The UNC student stands in the pit trying to get people to register to vote. Uh, the right to vote is a constitutionally guaranteed right. You should exercise it. Weinberg works with NC Perg, a public information research group helping students register to vote in the presidential primaries this year. The registration deadline was February 19th in North Carolina, but if we go back even before then, we're noticing an interesting trend. Compared to 2012, voter turnouts for Democrats at primaries has been way down, as low as a 30% decrease at South Carolina, for example. Now, when we compare that to Republicans, we're seeing record turnouts. At the Nevada primary, there was a 127% increase. David McLennan is a political professor at Meredith College in Raleigh. He attributes this political excitement to three factors, Donald Trump, a crowded field, and dissatisfaction with the government. You've seen the government shut down a couple times, you've seen gridlock. You kind of look at Washington and say, it's, nobody's governing. Which, according to McLennan, opens the path for a political outsider like Trump to gain support. McLennan says there's a parallel between the presidential hopeful and our current president. 
Obama brought new people into the process, and that's where Trump is doing well. He's bringing people who have never participated in the primary or caucus into the primary and caucus process. But when it comes to the general election, McLennan says Trump could be in trouble. He has such high unfavorables. You know, I mean, I think you know, we still see almost 60 percent of Republicans not voting for him. But Weinberg says no matter who you support, just go vote. You have the ability to get into a voting booth and say, hey, you're not doing what I want you to do. I'm going to get someone who will. The North Carolina primary for both parties is March 15th. In Chapel Hill, I'm Luis Fernandez reporting. <laughs> Number 33 Nathan Staub was a linebacker for UNC football. Unfortunately, his college playing career was cut short due to injuries. Not a bad knee or tweaked shoulder, but concussions. It's something he's dealt with ever since high school. And we're playing in the Georgia Dome. And in the second quarter, at the beginning of the second quarter, I looked over to someone and said, where am I? Um, if you're in the Georgia Dome, you should know where you are. After a loss to Rutgers last December, Staub made the decision to hang his cleats up for good. Mom, I've passed all the tests, you know. And she looks at me and she says, Nathan, so are we waiting for you to have permanent brain damage for sure? before you stop playing. Stories like Staub's have become all too common in football over the past decade. According to a PBS study, there have been 484 concussions reported in the National Football League since 2012. Numbers like this have caught the eye of associate professor at the UNC Gillings School of Global Public Health, Louis Margolis. On some Saturdays, you can see Margolis picketing football games outside of Keenan Stadium in an attempt to, as he puts it, educate the fans. I'm concerned because we don't know what's going to happen down the road. Margolis says encouraging people to play football is like rooting for people to smoke. But we don't gather people together to cheer people on in their smoking. We say, let's prevent smoking. Let's do what we can to prevent what we know will have long-term harmful effects. PhD student Michael Clark works at the Gefeller Sport-Related Traumatic Brain Injury Research Center, working directly with student-athletes dealing with concussion symptoms. Clark agrees with Margolis. Football can be very dangerous when it comes to head trauma. But he says concussions in other sports and activities happen quite often, too, and should get more focus. Yeah, you know, everyone on the football field is wearing a helmet, um, but some of the rates that you see for number of helmets worn while bicycling, uh, you know, are less than half. Staub knows all this, but if he had the chance to do it all over again, he wouldn't change a thing. You can't protect your kid from everything. Um, and football teaches you so much, and the risk is there, but there's risk in everything. But will it be a risk the rest of the world is willing to accept? In Chapel Hill, I'm Luis Fernandez reporting. After a long day of classes, senior Ryan Griffin makes his way into his room, sets his backpack down, gets comfortable, and reaches for a familiar friend. That's right, Pokemon. The Nintendo staple has been a part of video gaming vernacular for almost 20 years. Griffin remembers the first time he played. I remember my parents brought home this big plastic package with a Game Boy Color, Pokemon Blue, the guidebook, and a little like book light extension, and I was ecstatic. It's a pretty simple game. You catch, befriend, and train powerful creatures known as Pokemon. And then you battle friends and rivals to find out who's the ultimate Pokemon master. I wanna be the very best. Pikachu and his buddies at the Pokemon Company make a staggering $1.5 billion a year. Pikachu! You know, just kept picking up the games, kept playing them. When I got to college, you know, that's when a lot of people break out their old stuff and try to relive their childhoods. 2016 marks the 20th anniversary of the franchise. They're celebrating with giveaways, new games, even a Super Bowl commercial. Not only is it fun for gamers, there could be positive health effects too. Doctors from schools of medicine across the country have said video games can reduce chronic pain and anxiety. Griffin says no matter how old he is, Pokemon will always have a place in his heart. Sure, it's marketed to kids, but you'll still always love it. We'll grow into our 90s remembering that Pokemon was there for us at age five. In Chapel Hill, I'm Luis Fernandez reporting.